Chinatown on command. Welcome to a banquet. We're in one of the great kitchens of the world, the Dorchester Hotel in London. It's famous for its banquets all over the world, and you're just in time for a very special one. Mr. Edward Heath is here, Lord Mountbatten is here, all kinds of distinguished gentlemen and elegant ladies expecting the most magnificent three-course lunch. And I hope they don't know who's in charge, because it's not the normal head chef. It's a farmer's wife from Devon. Of course, she's cooked a three-course lunch before in her life. For 12 people in her own kitchen, she's never cooked for 500 people in the ballroom of the Dorchester. If it's a disaster, it's all down to her, because for Mrs. Gwen Troke, this is her first time in the big time. Mrs. Gwentroke helps her husband plough 200 acres of rich Devon soil, Thatton Farm. Her parents farmed here, and her mother taught her to cook in the farm kitchen she uses today. Her delicious roast duck with a special bramble sauce has won prizes. Does she look forward to cooking a banquet in a great professional kitchen and meeting the top professional cooks? Well, <laughs> I don't know actually what you've let me in for, but... Um... I think it would be very interesting to meet people that really know their cookery. My cookery is very limited. It would be very interesting to meet people who make all these wonderful sauces and very glamorous puddings and things. That really looks delicious. And this is traditional, is it? Yes, the potato pasty especially. Did you learn from your mother? Oh yes, yes. No, no other lessons? No other lessons, no. Do you think food tasted better in those days? Oh yes, definitely, yes. Take this pasty. Oh, are we all ready? Yes. Careful that, because it's hot. Yes. So you want we would uh, cook pasties, um, saffron cake, and scones, and all sorts of goodies, and then put it in a large basket, take a huge jug of tea, and we would take that to the fields. You know, sit on the sheaves of corn, or at hay town, you would sit around the hay rick and um, have your drinking. We, we always called it drinking. I don't know why, because in my day, drinking was always food and drink. Originally, perhaps it was only drink, because they did used to drink a lot of cider in Devon. They still do, to wash down the pasties and sponges and thick clotted cream. Farmers use up the calories, but the guests at the Dorchester probably don't need them. I think we'll have to consult some slimming experts because I hear that Edward Heath has to watch his weight. Oh dear. What were you thinking of for him? Well, I had thought of a coffee pudding. Is that slimming? Not really. And indeed, eight ounces of sugar creamed into eight ounces of butter can't be all that slimming. Gwen folds it into a coffee sauce and then, to please Mr Heath, the sailor, she layers it with sponge fingers soaked in rum. Before she serves it to Mr Heath, Gwen intends to show her pudding to a nutritionist, a gourmet and a famous cook. But first, of course, her family must approve it. Now, let's help yourself to cream in a moment. Thank you. Can I? Yes, please. I don't want the nut, though, thank you. What do you think of Esther? My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But I think it's a little bit sweet. And I think the sharper oranges yeah, will orange is orange blend it because... a bit better. Yes, sometimes apricot. Yes, we have the food. Mate, that'll do. Stuff. Thank you. Do you think we'll be able to cope with the Dorchester? Yes, I think so. Any advice for her? Okay, not get flustered. Mm -hmm. Keep calm. That's right, keep calm. Right, say the honour of tomorrow, Uncle Mark. The Dorchester kitchens, an inferno of heat and noise. They can make 600 simultaneous souffles here, cook 2,000 meals a day, find exotic delicacies, even fly bangers and mash to Elizabeth Taylor in Hollywood. 
The chefs work in a strict chain of command, from the porters all the way up to the one man entitled to wear the tall white hat, the master chef de cuisine, chef Eugène Kaufmann. Good morning, Dorchester Hotel. Would you send us an original tin of Imperial Veluga? For 26 years, Chef Kaufler's run this empire. Now for one day, Gwen is going to try. Oh, my God, I've seen enough already to frighten me. <laughs> More? More? Yes. Yeah. Well, things that are going on. Yeah, well, I imagine it would be pretty massive, you know. You're going to run all that? Oh, no. Oh, I don't... I think that's impossible. Chef, this is uh, Gwen Trope. How do you do? How do you do? Nice to meet you. Chef Kaufler has designed elaborate dishes for kings and queens. He's known the world over for his discriminating palate. So Gwen's brought him a tribute, a potato pasty from Devon. Now, I, I hope you will enjoy this. It's come all the way from Devon. Yes, Safety it looks up. very appetising with this uh, Devonshire cream. You can see it's... Mmm, uh... excellent. Yes, it's very good indeed. You like it, do you? It's a nicely spiced, uh, nicely seasoned. Mm -hmm. And the uh, bread crust, the, the pastry, pastry yes. is very, very, it's very short, right. isn't it? Yeah? Yes. Mm, yes. How many staff will Gwen be in charge of? In the kitchen here, there was about 110 white hats, I call them. You see? Oh dear. <laughs> some of them are empty too, but. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought we'll have now some uh, opposite of Devonshire side, and we have a glass of champagne. So I think uh, that will refresh mm, you. I think lovely. You, well, I always like to meet country people who, who, who are interested in cooking. Yes. Because mm. I've grown up on a farm myself. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Did you keep cows? Yes, cows, cows mm -hmm. goats, yes. pigs. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, good health and to the success of our combined action. Thank you That's very good. much. And the same to you, your very good health. Thank you very much. Cheers. And to you, Esther. A bottle of champagne and Gwen's banquet is launched. Most suitably because it's a Foyles literary lunch to well, honour Mr Heath's book about sailing. Now Ben Perrick from Foyles has to approve and, Gwen's uh, menu. We think... Uh, seafood cocktail to begin with. Excellent. As uh, the guest of honour is Mr. Heath and the chairman's Lord Mountain Batten. Yes. Just right. As we say in French, a gratin, a fruit de mer, a marinier, or marinier, or, uh, you know, it has to do with, uh, with sea. With, uh, yes. yes hmm. a, a marin is a, is a sailor in French, you see. Oh, yes. That sounds yes. marvelous. Yes. It does, So yes. that, mm. that would be quite nice. Something nautical, yeah. isn't yes. it? Yes. And then we thought to follow it with the main meal to be duckling with a bramble sauce. We thought that, that might be a little unusual. Is uh, duckling easy to eat? You know, we have to worry about that. Uh, yes, I do realise uh, you have uh, quite a, a number of uh, guests who don't like to be bothered with bones, so we, there will be no bone in it except the main bone, you know, and uh, it's quite easy to eat. Now, about this bramble sauce, um, I th we think that, that'll be all right, because I mean, applesauce really, it's, it's a bit everyday-ish, isn't it, applesauce? We must have bramble. No, but that's what I said straight mm. away, it's yeah. something different. Yes. And, uh, yeah. uh, you, you, I suppose you just make a, a puree, a pulp of bramble? Yes, a bramble, yes, a yes, puree. Uh, and then if you like to give it a thought for the pudding, give you a well, to think of um, something to do with sailors, as you just mentioned, yes. you may have to Actually, a I've drum. Actually, I brought a pudding with me from Devon, um, I was thinking, actually, about Edward Heath when I made it up, and there is rum in it. It's a coffee cream with rum. Maybe mm. a little bit too Well, rich. look, anyway, look, let's try it. I think yes. you must taste it, yes. don't you? Uh, yes, it might be as rich as you think. What do the ladies like eating, Ben? I think mostly they like uh, a rich pudding. This seems the sort of thing they would like, but as Eugene says, uh, after duckling uh, or duck, uh, well, the one with the duckling is with, with, uh, with bramble, which is... Uh, uh, try it, let's see. Uh, Esther, are you going to try some of this? I'm watching my figure, Gwen. Mm, I'll try a bit. I'll try a bit. It's 
Excellent. My husband does prefer fruit with it. Oh, he, yeah, yeah, he, he has like mandarins or apricots mm -hmm. or any type of fruit. He think it needs fruit mm -hmm. with it, like a pear. That, uh, no, it's almost boat, boat shape, isn't it? Yes, but it could be. It's marvelous as it is. The pudding is yes. de destined for the molars of Mr. Heath. <laughs> For scientific advice, Gwen comes to the expert who put the nut in nutrition, Dr. Magnus Pike. It's jolly nice, but if I were interested in the future well-being of the Conservative Party, <laughs> I would warn Mr. Heath, only to have, you see, Esther's given me a tiny little helping, only to eat a very little helping of it. And if he's a sensible man, as I've no doubt he is, yes. banquet eating, and no doubt he gets invited to a lot of banquets, yes. he probably will leave most of it, and that's the pity. Because if you eat, I mean, in, in the 18th century, we had gluttons with enormous stomachs out in front yes. because they used to eat it all and like it, and they died in their middle age of apoplexy. Now, we don't want Mr. Heath to die of apoplexy, do we? We're no. all unanimous. Well, we're most yes. of us are unanimous. Well, we yes. can't be most of us. Anyway, we yes. don't want, of course, no, we're of course a tiny lot no, of people. No. Under those circumstances, this is bad for Mr. Heath. Could you suggest anything to go along with it, then? I mean, would um, fruit, let's say, say a pear, to go along with it? Yes, that's a good yes. idea. If yes. this was the sort of garnish on something like a pear, or yes. something like fruit, yes. that's a good idea. Because if you don't mind my saying so, the ideal banquet for these wealthy, sedentary people, yes. I remember having it, is, you know, it was a little cold soup and it was a little bit of game with, 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 with game chips and so on. Where you, it's mostly you're mostly eating air then and so on. Yes. And uh, uh, the small helpings, but quite delicious. So you yes. do him of a good turn. You see, your Cornish food is traditional food, and it came from the time, e my gum, we've been, you've been out in the fields all day, <laughs> yes. you've been bang, bang, you've been exactly. shooting something all yes, day. Exactly. And now people aren't in the main. No. I lived for 25 years in Scotland, and in Scotland they're much too fond of just baked things, and they eat too much fat. And all this lovely thing, I like to get my milk hot from the cow, <laughs> is not necessarily a good idea, because pasteurization is a very good thing I come now. from Devon, mm -hmm. and we make this lovely pudding called Devonshire Junket. Yeah. Well, it's really essential. I mean, this is a, um, the thing you must do is have the milk straight from the cow. But you've got to know your cow. <laughs> <laughs> you know your cow. And also, you see, a cow is rather badly designed animal. A scientist could have designed the animal much better because the milk comes from a rather indelicate end of the animal, doesn't it? And quite near where the milk comes, a whole lot of other stuff comes which you don't really want to eat, no. do you? No, you don't. Certainly not. But you can save yourself now, because particularly if you're a middle-aged man, well, you're an obviously not a middle-aged man, but middle-aged <laughs> men can eat too much Thank meat you. because... Thank oh, not at all. <laughs> I'm a quick guy, I'm a quick observer, scientists have got to be. But you see, the middle-aged men eat too much fat. They eat too much saturated. When you eat meat, you're eating a lot of fat. Mm -hmm. Now, you can eat what appears to be meat yes. without it being meat. Now, here we are, there's a saucepan. Yes, yes. And we put in it half a pint of water, or thereby. Simple. Now then we take about half this is the packaging industry. There's a huge packaging industry, but of course what there ought to be is an unpackaging industry. <laughs> so you put the stuff out again. <laughs> a very good now, idea. If, I, yes. if we put half this in, I want you to watch this because it shows how marvellous science is. Now I know what you're going to say. You're going to say it looks like sawdust. It looks like it, sawdust. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, does. it looks like sawdust. Yes. Now hang on a minute. Now, now you'll see the wonders of science. We stir it all up. Watch it. And lo and behold, what does it smell like? Go on, say sausage meat. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> now I have here a nicing bag. Hold it for me, would you please? You're going to do a trick now, are you? No, I'm not going to trick. I'm, I'm going to dispense it for you. Right, <clears throat> now then. We now want some sausages. That's what you said. Yes. This is for Mr. Heath at the Dorchester. You see? Let's have a few more. Now you take them away and fry them, and you'll find they're absolutely delicious. Well, it's delicious. Well, it's quite. They're not necessarily as delicious as duck. No. But in a world where people eat too much, particularly the Dorchester eaters, yes. they're much better for you. Yes. Now, how do we eat that? Well, yes. You just eat them. You know, you <laughs> stick a fork in them, put them in your mouth, and bite. Cheers.
Now go on, I like your pudding. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. There you mm. are, now that's what I call mm. praise. Mm. Now I bet you an awful lot of people at the Dorchester, having had duck and all these marvellous puddings and things, would think, oh good race, and for our 17 pounds 10 or whatever it is the meal is costing, today we've got sausages. Oh, what a relief. Wouldn't they? Wouldn't yes. they? They might, yes. you never know. <laughs> what do you think, Graham? I think Dr. Pike can keep his sausages, and I'll have my roast duck. So soya bean sausages are out. The next step for Gwen is to order the ingredients. The Dorchester buys in bulk 50 saddles of veal to butcher a week, 300 saddles of lamb, 120 sides of beef. It's a vegetarian's nightmare. Gwen has to explain the sauce she's invented to Peter Holliday, the chef in charge of sauce making. Well, we're having duck, Peter, and um, we'd like to do bramble sauce. Have you ever made a bramble sauce before? Not brambles, no. We do other fruits, uh, cherries and oranges, things like that, but not, uh, not brambles. And what do you think a pint, what, what would a pint of... Um, of sauce do, if you reckon? Well, normally we do a pint of sauce for a service of ten. A ten? A ten, yes. Yeah. So we would need 40 pints that way. Right? Yes. Yeah. Which is what? Five gallons? Five gallons of sauce. <laughs> it's quite a lot, <laughs> I know. But... Yeah. Uh, but the blackberries, I don't know whether they'll be frozen or. Frozen? The Dorchester? <laughs> we have a deep freeze downstairs where we keep scampi stuff. Hello. Uh, Mr. Derek Angus, please. Mr. Coxedge, Dorchester. Jack Coxedge, chief buyer. They call him the terror of Smithfield Market. Hello, Derek. Jack Coxedge. We've got um, a foils literary lunch, December 10. Uh, and they're going to have duckling. So that will be 100 plus on the 9th. And as usual, the many thorpe out. Yeah. I want these nicely presented, Derek, because uh, we've got a very, it's a very important lunch, important people. More important than we usual lunches that we have, all right? I know. Sorry about that. Mm. Are you having a, an, an apple sauce or yeah. something with well, the Well, we're having a bramble sauce. Now, that, that's blackberries. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know something every day, don't you? And the sweet you're having? Well, we're, we're making little boats, and uh, they're, they're going to be made of pear. You're not calling it morning cloud, are you? <laughs> no. I should think that when this gets round, this is what they're going to have. We'll probably have 600 instead of 400, but still. <laughs> How about a raspberry syllabub? That's your alive. Oh, raspberry syllabub. Or peppermint ice with chocolate chips. Gourmet and food critic Robert Morley is particularly partial to pudding. No, you don't like French food, do you? Don't. No. No, nor do I. Um, raspberry syllabub, I think. I love raspberry. Raspberry syllabub for two, yes? Or shall we share a portion? No, no, we can have two portions. The BBC is paying. There we are. Raspberry syllabub. Will it take your taste away if you just try some of that? You don't mean to say you brought the pudding to Walton, darling? Yes. It's the most dirty thing I've ever heard. In your handbag, mm -hmm. courage, courage, From courage. Seven. My darling, has it travelled? Yes, it has. And no, what no. is this now, my this darling? This is coffee cream. Uh, it is quite rich and quite sweet, but the last time I made it... Wasn't a success? No, I didn't put quite as much sugar in. And? So, it's a little less sweet, which I think quite probably... But darling, is it still in the experimental stage? It is This really is nice. supposed to be your I chef want... Yes, but with this, um, I want different people's opinion of it, actually. Are we going to market it? Yes, right. <laughs> this is for Edward Heath. Don't be feeding him his... Yachtsman. Very... There's a little rum in it. We had to we had to think of a nautical touch. A little rum. He's very lucky. Something he doesn't use to get in his boat. I imagine they have ham sandwiches. I don't think it's any good spoiling yachtsmen. They're quite unaccustomed to good food. They spend their time being sick over the side. <laughs> it's delicious, dear. I think a woman who cooks you know, like you do for the family, is the most sacred thing in the world. It's like family prayers used to be. A good, a good meal by the mother of the household. 
holds the family together. I must say, it's delicious. Do you mind the fact that it takes you sometimes three hours to prepare a meal which people like me waffle down in two and a half minutes? I don't mind at all if you enjoy it. I think, you know, like not, sex, a, I minute, suppose, really. a minute hasn't been wasted. Women what take hours, <laughs> like sex. Women take hours to prepare and then they say it rather quickly, yes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. Now then, what do you think, darling? And is it wise to go on? This is delicious. Will you offer this to the proprietor with our compliments? It'll make him so jealous. I, uh, I doubt we shall, uh, yes. Do you offer it to Miss Malcolm and say, because I think he'd like to taste it. It's a sensational dish. Don't worry, darling. I'm used to upsetting food usually over myself. Delicious. Is it going to be something of an anticlimax? Well, let's see why not. You think that only yesterday I was on a diet. <laughs> we thought we'd take Gwen's pudding to Fanny Craddock to see if she approves of it. Do you think she will? Fanny's only keen on arranging. Well, I mustn't say these terrible things about her. I really rather like Fanny. But Fanny decorates everything up to a point of insanity. She's a girl who tears, you know, spun sugar into shapes and uh, adds sort of... Uh, things to resemble beetroot boats and uh, embellishes and decorates until the food is stone cold. Gwen, would you like um, to show Mrs. Craddock what you've made and let her taste it and see what she thinks? Gwen, I'm depressed by such formality. Nobody ever calls me Mrs. Craddock. We did a fish and chip program on television many, many years ago, and I've been fish and chips funny ever since, which is much more cosy. This is the Gwen. one you created, isn't it? Yes. Fairly delicious, of course. But, sweetie, it's too sickly after duck. Yes. You know, duck is one of the richest dishes. It is rich, yes. And if you're not going to have salad and cheese, which one does in the French manner, you know, mm -hmm. in the menu, see, after the duck, I think you should have something which clears the palate completely. And may I dare make a suggestion? Yes, do. No, no, no. I've got in my handbag a little thing that I brought here, which I got from Michel Cartler, you know, the maids for ship to cuisine here. Ooh. What have I done with it? It's called a baquette. Do you know these? Oh, yes. Now, these are baquettes. Now, you want very much to, to complement Mr. Heath on this, don't Yes, you? yes. Well, now, a baquette is a boat. Now, supposing you use that thing, that pat, a tweed d'amour. Yeah. You know the one I mean? Yeah. And... What's that in English? An almond paste of a biscuit, a biscuit almond paste, but it's, it's, it's worked very fine, isn't it? And it's cooked so that it's, it's very, very, it's paper thin, so that the edge is slightly brown when it comes out of the oven, but none of it's brown hard. Now then, supposing you had either a pineapple or a lemon or a grape, which is very subtle, sorbet, which then can be into a spiral like the sorbet monogas. And then instead of having sails, which would be very obvious yes. and not a bit mm -hmm. subtle. Mm -hmm. You have the what we call the sucre filet, uh, spun sugar, which would look like a silver cloud, which is what we all wish for Mr. Heath. Yes, we do. Have you ever eaten that one? No. It's no. divine, of course, and, but it's totally cleansing. To the, you see, what it does is this. The taste buds, when they've had a rich duck, which is one of the richest dishes yes. in the world, are totally exhausted. Mm -hmm. So the job of the, the menu maker mm -hmm. is to revive the taste buds. Yes. Taste that yes, do. Now you've got another spoon there, which is um, okay. which is this grape? Aha. C'est un sorbet au raisin. Come on, yes. please. It's very cold out of the fridge at the moment. Forgive me. I just washed my hands. Now, do you see how it cleans this? Mm. Uh -huh. It's very refreshing. You don't like it, or do you? Well, you see, I'm, <laughs> I must admit, I like my coffee oh. pudding. <laughs> have you tasted it? Go and have it? a nice... Oh, no, I, yes. I, Dude, I, look, this is... Would you? Yes. Mm. Uh, thoroughly unhygienic. It's the same spoon. Here's another spoon. That's better. Mm. Incidentally, Chef, mm. when I do that, I turn it around using the handle. Mm. It's very nice, but it's very rich. It's very, terrible. It very is rich. very rich. I After admit. a very yeah. plain... Main course. If yeah, even with right. a salad to cut it, and some cheese would be better. But that no way. But this I did at home. But you see, but you've got to forget I, home cooking yes, when you come into a professional kitchen. Yes. Well, kitchen. I thought that because it had rum in it, that was the naughty cold. Yes, um, but sickly again. I mean, it's the most sickly of all the flavourings we can use, isn't it? And you see, and the trouble is, all my friends, they love it. 
Yes, but see, and they're then not you... professionals, and you're, you're coming into the jungle now. Well, it's tooth and claw, and as I have said, just, you walk around with a battery of knives poised just, just but between surely, your shirt plates. Yeah, but surely you eat what you like. Oh, no. Don't you? Not if you're doing it with fish. <laughs> In your home, you do. <laughs> I have heard, I've never dined with Mr. Keith, but I have heard he's got a very discriminating palate, you know. And he's slimming. And he's slimming. And he's slimming. He's slimming. Well, yes. we just would leave it. And that would be the final insult. Mm. Now, what else is there in this meal? What do they start with? Seafood and cocktail. You see, it's mm. right. Mm. A seafood cocktail. Mm. And then straight into the duck. Mm. <laughs> it's a, th a three course luncheon, you yes. see, isn't it? Yes. And there's one rich star. There is one open iron. And there is one wine rounder offer. Mm -hmm. But two of those, dear. Is that too much, do you think? Too rich? No. Well, what do you, what would you suggest? Honey? I wouldn't do it. You I would, would never serve a seafood cocktail or, or a seafood or crepe farci or frigné yeah. before a duck. Never in a million years. What is the sauce of the duck? So we have sort of a bramble. That's what I did. What is a bramble? Blackberry. With duck. Mm. That's what I did for the cook of the realm. Yes, know, dear, but now you're sauce. among professionals. And you want, I, I want to take care of it, Bramble jelly. You get, it's used for melting down for brushing flans, my love. Yes, but you Fresh make it, you have lemon. There's lemon in it. A lemon jelly. Not a lemon jelly and... I should leave that to you, Shay. All these jams, they are so English. Being English. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, my darling, that the English have never had a cuisine. But, but surely there's it's... nothing English. Yorkshire pudding came from Burgundy. Mm. Uh, it's La Gougere Bourguignon was the original Yorkshire pudding. And the what about Devonshire pasty? Cornish pasty. A Devonshire. Or Devonshire. Mm. <laughs> The great Escoffier, who was, I think, he's my god, you see, the yes. chef, he said that menu making was the hardest part of a chef's job. Yes, I quite agree. And that very rarely in his career did he achieve a balance. I always have to fall back into French this anyway. He achieved an equilibrium which produced a perfect menu. Well, quite probably, yes, you've got the right idea, but I'm a bit disappointed that I can't use the coffee cream somehow. That's you know, that's where I'm like to have used it. But you do see the point. Yes, I do. Yes, I, I see Don't that it's going to be heavy. Yes. I mean, think of the poor stomach. Rude messages from Tom, you see. What are you sending down now? Equal quantities of sugar and ground almonds. Yeah. There's about four egg whites there. Yeah. I just fold these in. Keith Record is the chef in charge of puddings. Put the stents on the tray. Just a little bit of mixture. Now we cook this in the oven now for approximately three minutes. Have you ever made anything like this? No. No, I haven't. I'm quite interested to see this. Oh, that looks fine. Uh, you can always do it when they cook because they're nice golden brown around the outside. Yes. See? Now we get the mould. This is the barquette mould. Yeah, this is uh, sorbet. is a mixture of uh, water, yes. sugar, mm -hmm. and then uh, what? I mean, depending on what flavour you want. Like if this yes. is lemon, you would yes. put the lemon juice and the lemon zest, yes. bring it to the boil, yes. and take the lemon zest out. Otherwise, it goes too bitter. Then we put it in the machine and freeze it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, about halfway stage, we've got some egg whites in it, which makes it very light. Mm, yes. Yes, because we haven't got the rum in it, I guess. We'll get the rum into what? The, the sorbet? The yes. sorbet, yeah. yes. So Gwen's little pear boats stuffed with coffee cream have been scuttled by Fanny's barquettes garlanded with spun sugar. Ingredients, sugar boiled in water, an old broom handle, and a lot of space. I, I should, you see, 
dress the whole boats up in one service because they're four hundred feet. And then I would have a sponge sugar even lighter than that, and if possible, almost white, which really represents the, a mist. See, so it has very light, oh, transparent yes. little yes. thing. What should we call it? La barquette yeah. dans la brume du matin. Could you tell in, me in English? In English, it means the, the barquette or the little boat in the morning mist. It's a pity, really, that we couldn't have got some pear into this because I had a wonderful name for it. I was going to call it Teddy Pear. The Good Food Guide says the Dorchester restaurants are necessary but no longer glamorous. The editor, Christopher Driver, explains why his inspectors don't often enjoy eating in big hotels. I think of hotel cooking as a, an industrial system uh, in the sense that um, any hotel chain, like a motor car production line, is as strong as the weakest link in it. And I think the great strength of uh, domestic cooking is that the person who's bought the food has cooked it and is bringing it to table. But in a vast London hotel, or even in a sort of comparatively small city restaurant, there are a great many pretty weak links in this chain, from the buyer to the cook, to the waiter, to the customer. And that's responsible for most of the trouble that goes on in a hotel. But as a professional eater, you think that Gwen's possibility of making a meal at the Dorchester as good as the one she would in her Devon kitchen is remote, do you? I would think that she would have uh, not merely to cook it, but to run swiftly from the stove to the customer, however many corridors she had to pass on the way uh, in order to uh, get that thing cooked uh, to the customer in, in the condition that she would like to have it uh, served in her own house. What would you think of duck and blackberries? I've never had, uh, I've never had that. It might work because I've often you need with duck um, something tart, don't you? You, you cook yes, duck. Yes, yes. Mm. But ducks are, Duck's a dish that I very, in any form, is some, something that I very seldom order in a restaurant because it's so difficult to time. And, yes. and um, if it doesn't come out of a plastic bag nowadays, you're lucky. And um, uh, even if it hasn't, it's quite likely to be either overcooked or undercooked. Do you and, think um, duck gets, it's better to have duck for home cooking rather yes. than... Yes, oh, certainly. Yes, yes. But we're hoping to do duck on this menu for 400. Well, good luck. <laughs> The day before the banquet, the ducks arrive from the market to be checked by a brand new master chef. Nice one. Well, they're all the same. That looks lovely. I always look at the tail because I like a decent tail. It's because a duck, not an ox. Yeah, I know, but the point is I always cut a slit here when I do a oh, yeah. duck oh. and push the tail through. No matter if You'll find that we, we would, we'll take plenty of steps to push that through there yes, so that right. it doesn't but put you. But you see, if it hasn't got a now, decent tail, that's it's no the, good. If it hasn't got a decent tail, it's no good. Well, you've got to have a good tail to pull through. You see, our suppliers know that if we, have, if we return one, we return the lot. Yes. So they don't take yes, any chances. True. It's beautiful, that. You see? Beautiful. What are you doing? Good job it's You're dead. Yes. Screams will be terrible. <laughs> what are you doing? It's all right. Yeah, they're very nice. I will say, you know, all right. it's all beautiful. Thank you, yes. Jenny. And we've got enough for what, 500 people? Enough for people? 500 because the numbers have gone up. You yes. remember when we were discussing it before, the menu? Yes. At the 400, we've yes. gone up to 500. Then we've got I don't enough. know if it's the man with the book or it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, everything is big and beautiful, isn't it? Oh, the, then I, yes. I can go to coffee then quite happy, can I? Yes, yes you can. Yeah, it's lovely. That's the Thank people you. who supply them. Yes. In case you get another job up here as a chef. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Seven thirty a.m. Wednesday, the tenth of December, banquet day. In the kitchen below, a hundred and fifty ducks are already sizzling in the oven. Nine a.m. The master chef arrives. Ducks are chopped up to be kept warm for four hours under buttered paper. At home, Gwen brings her duck freshly roasted straight to the table. But this is an industrial process.
Gwen's called the first course Seafood Admiral after Lord Mountbatten. White wine, cheese and cream mixed with 95 pounds of scallops, prawns and scampi. is a little boat in the morning mist, mist you see. Yes. We only mm -hmm. have to put the mist on now to represent the mist, you see. Oh, yes. The numbers of guests have gone up so much, they've had to make 20 gallons of bramble sauce. I think it tastes very nicely it does. like that. It does, do you yeah. want it a little sweeter or not, do you? Um, I quite probably would myself, but, but I mean, we've got to think about the. Well, we can put it, make it a little piece. sweeter, yes? We can make it, do you want it sort of sour sweet, don't you? You do. With some lemon juice in it. Yes. You want some be lemon lovely. juice yes. in it, yes. But, um, it brings out the flavour. What do you think? Do you think a little sweeter or not? A little sweeter and, and sharper at the same time. Ah, see, it yes. makes a sour sweet sort That's of. Right. It tastes very nice like that. are given in a strange kitchen French. Heaven knows how anyone understands it in the din, but the commotion means that the restaurants are already clamouring for food. The Foyles Literary Lunch is about to start. It's five pounds for a ticket to lunch with the celebrities, and somewhere among them we've smuggled in Gwen's husband and a good food guide inspector. They're all hungry, all expecting a banquet. <laughs> The head waiter has sent word, foils pas à table. It means send up the food urgently, but another chef is giving an interminable order. At last, they're off. Oh, 
First course, Seafood Admiral. But Lord Mountbatten is deep in the script of his speech. Is he going to notice Gwen's delicate compliment? Will he even taste it? Yes. Mr Heath's taken the plunge, but the Admiral of the Fleet's still immersed in his speech. The ducks have been waiting for four hours. Now they're reheated for their big moment. The seafood admiral is about to be cleared away. Mount Batten has almost missed his chance. The bramble sauce is delicious, but will she remember to taste the duck? A balancing act, 12 portions of peas, spuds and duck in bramble sauce. First of all, I must say that the first course was very, very good. Oh, excellent. I'm better than I've ever had. Oh, yes, I must do that myself. Yes, you agree. For the more conservative taste, apple sauce. Now, the duck is beautiful. That's all right, too. Yes. Oh, you haven't tried it yet, have you? No, I haven't tried it. No, I'm very good. A pity Gwen can't be here to listen to the compliments, but the chef must stay in her kitchen to cope with any disasters. Well, the main course has gone up. Yeah. Do you think you're going to be, you know, get it done in time? Well, we're all right. We're in trouble. We've had a little bit of trouble with the sugar, yes. Uh, yeah. Crystallizing yeah. that. Oh, dear. But, uh, the heat doesn't help now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we all just stuck to the coffee pudding, didn't we? <laughs> The boats have run into trouble. The spun sugar has melted in the heat of the kitchen. Keith has had to spin a second batch. That's left Gwen with no time to show the waiters how to serve the delicate strands of mist. But ready or not, up they have to go. Even now, some of the mist has fallen flat, so they're saving the fluffy ones for the top table.
the little boats were too fragile to be mass-produced. One or two did get wrecked on the journey from the kitchens. We asked the good food guide inspector, whose identity of course we must not reveal, to give her verdict. I thought the seafood admiral was admirable. It really was one of the nicest seafood dishes I've eaten in a restaurant or in a, a private house. The duckling with ramble sauce, I thought, was a nice idea which didn't work. My duck had a very soggy layer of subcutaneous fat, which wasn't at all pleasant to eat. How did we end with the little boat in the morning mist? It really was a triumph, and it was a shame that it fell flat, uh, literally, uh, in my case. Chairman, Your Excellency, my Lord, ladies and gentlemen, silence for the right Edward Heath. Lord Mountbatten, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. I'm greatly honored that Christina Foyle should have invited me to be the guest of this lunch today, which is, I believe, an unusual occasion uh, because it has been entirely planned and prepared by Mrs. Gwen Troke. <laughs> I'm sure any sailor here would welcome her in his crew. Gwen? Sorry to interrupt you. There's someone I think you know. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> you didn't expect to see me, did you? You're <laughs> <laughs> I think she's giving you a go there. Have you been to right. the lunch? Yeah, I've been to the luncheon. Yeah, all in you. style. <laughs> no. Um, Oh, very good. You did, yes? I didn't consider the duck was done cooked enough. Oh, oh dear, dear. Well, no. Oh, you are an interviewer. <laughs> oh, well, not, well, not cooked as not well as, as, good as I you would do it at, at home. home. No. Oh, dear. No. Mm. What did you reckon on it? Was, um, All tough? right, otherwise. No, no, no. Not tough, but, but I would prefer it a little bit more crisp. A little more crisp, yes. What about the pudding, is that right? Mm. All right, yeah, I like the flavour, I like the taste. Yeah. Yes, and, I did. Um, did you like the starter, the seafood? Yes, that suited me, that right? That was very good, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yes, everyone seemed to have liked that. Oh, I liked it all right. Very you good. Mm, you are a one, aren't you? <laughs> Tin as a rule, I like it. <laughs> yeah, well done. That was splendid. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the lunch. I enjoyed lunch. it very much. You did, It was yes. very ingenious. I liked the boats and the sweet. You did, yes. yes. Well, we, we made that especially for you this week. Well, I suspect it and, Yes. <laughs> I should think the name gave it away, didn't it? You know, morning Mist. Morning Mist, yes. yes. You, you did really enjoy it. I did enjoy it yes. very much. I enjoyed the whole meal. So it's all oh. exciting, isn't it? Oh, it was, yes. Take over. I wouldn't have missed it for anything, actually, yeah. no. You're going to do it permanently now? No, <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> I think I should quietly go back to the farm. My husband's a farmer. In the West Country, I hear. Yes. So I'll tell him we've done very well. <laughs> yes. Actually, he's, he is here. But oh, he's here, is he? Yes. Don't need to run somewhere. Did you try it all out on him first? I didn't realise he was coming. And this was sort of a surprise just... sprung on me. Oh, here, here he is. is. Yes. He just sneaked in at the back. Yes, he did. Yes, I'm yes. supposed to be on work. I had a day off. <laughs> that was one of the performers, wasn't it? Yes. 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 Actually, at one point, I had created a coffee pudding for you, mm. a coffee cream. Mm. I don't know. Do you like coffee things? Yes, very much so. Yes. You do? Yes. I wondered if that... Um, I drink a lot of coffee. That quite probably would have been very nice, but... Mm. Um, Why didn't you do it? Well, Fanny Craddock at one stage <laughs> tasted it, and yeah. she thought it was much too rich. I like it, my friends <laughs> like it, you know, and the family like it. I have it, a recipe which is done rather like that, but with maple syrup and... Uh, all sorts of other mm, things, mm. which is quite delicious. It is. It drives yes, my doctor yes. up the wall. <laughs> I'm sure that, yes, well. <laughs> well, you did us very well. Thank, thank you very, very much. Yes, well, thank you very much. Thank very you. Nice to see you. No one will ever know if Mr. Heath really would have preferred the coffee pudding. Anyway, at last Gwen can get away from the heat and noise of a professional kitchen. So you're, you're on the end of your your trial today, have you? Yes. You, um, I think you passed very well. Uh, I, think I really it, yeah. enjoyed it. Thank you very much. It's a little cooler out here than down oh, there, it isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. It's very, very hot.
not so. going there. But anyway, thank you very much. Pleasure. And I really nice enjoyed meeting it. you, yes. and I wish you all the best. Goodbye. And a happy and new year you. to you. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, well, nice to meet you.